Ozark is back on Netflix with its third season. I'm Riley Chow, contributing editor at Gold Derby, here with Tony and Golden Globe, Emmy, and two-time Oscar-nominated actress Janet McTeer, who joined the show last season as cartel lawyer Helen Pierce. Janet, when we first see you this season, you're getting tortured. So how is that? Was that new for you? Were you able to prepare? Um, uh, yeah, it's not something I do on a daily basis. Um, it was um, <clears throat> it was kind of challenging to um, to uh, shoot it. It's it's not fun to be tortured. Um, so it's uh, uh, it was, but it was incredibly well handled. And you know, those kind of scenes they're kind of challenging, so that makes them fun to do. Um, so yeah, yeah, but it wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit tired and wet by the end of it. All right, so six months have passed between seasons two and three. Can you fill in the gaps for us of what Helen was up to? Um, well, I think that she was, um, you know, she went back to her home in Chicago and uh, she was busy doing her thing the way she does. Uh, but in the meantime, um, uh, the 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 particularly what Wendy Bird has been doing. She's been sort of monitoring how the birds have been handling the whole situation, and um, the the fact that they are trying to actually do something that she's really impressed by that they've never done before, that hadn't been done before in the in her world, which is to uh, create a um, a legitimate business uh, to launder the money in, in terms of the Missouri Bell, which they get, and they're that's what they're going to do. And she's really impressed by that. And so she decides to haul, you know, go back and go to the Ozarks and, and uh, make it happen. All right. So you joined uh, the show last season. How did you get this job? Uh, and how did they describe your character? Um, I think they knew that they wanted a new, you know, somebody to take over from Dell, because obviously Dell gets. Um, is no longer with us at the end of the first season. So they wanted somebody to take over and they wanted a woman. And um, uh, so I talked to them and they asked me if I would be interested. And, and it just seemed they just, you know, I love the actors. I love this first season. And it just seemed like I was being asked to play a really interesting, fun character that I hadn't played before. And that's as an actor is always just, you know, incredibly entertaining and fulfilling to do. Uh, so what was new about this role for you then? Um, I've never played a lawyer for a drug cartel. I've never I've never played somebody who was embroiled in that kind of world before. Uh, I'd never played somebody who um, regularly kills people uh, for a living, uh, orders it. I've never played somebody who was okay with that. Um, and that was a, that was really Challenging. I had no idea where to start. <laughs> so you recurred last season, and then this season you were upgraded to series regular status. Uh, is that something that you knew when you came aboard the show, or no, not at all? Yeah, no, that was uh, not at all. Um, I joined as a guest because I was also filming something else at the same time. So I was going backwards and forwards between uh, Los Angeles and um, Atlanta, which is where we film Ozark. And <clears throat> excuse me. And um, uh, um, when as the season went on, and as we realised that the character was really good fun, and they said, "Would I asked if I'd be." interested in coming back again for another season and I said yes because I thought she was so much fun to play and, and uh, Chris Mundy who is the, Chris Mundy who is the showrunner who is uh, a fantastic writer and a great guy he um, was very uh, you know said if she comes back you know we'll, we'll expound the character we'll do something else that we haven't seen her do before and that's what they that's what. That's why the show's so brilliant. So it seemed, uh, and also I was not filming something else at the same time, so it meant I was available to be more around. And you know, apart from I think three episodes where I was already doing something else, but so I flew around a lot. But other than, otherwise, I was pretty much full time on on Ozark, which was just really bliss. <laughs> so coming into the season, what did they tell you about what your arc would be? I knew what my arc was going to be. I knew that, you know, one of the themes of uh, 
the the series is the families and how they all deal with being members of the drug cartel or working for the drug cartel. You know, you have um, obviously you have the Bird family, and then you have um, you know Julia Garner's character's family. You have um, Darlene's family, uh, and so to bring Helen's family into it and to see what that would be um, and how that would be to add that to the mix was was. Uh, that I knew was going to happen, and I knew that um, myself and Wendy were going to become business partners and friends, and what that would be. And of course, she's such a magnificent actress. How could that not? And a friend. How could that not be uh, really good fun to do? So yeah, it was a no-brainer. Really, it was. I had a wonderful time. I found your outfits this season quite striking in a way that I don't remember them being in season two. Uh, can you tell me about how your wardrobe uh, defines your character? Um, I think she was. I, actually, I think the wardrobe's pretty. I think the wardrobe's pretty pretty similar in two and uh, two and three. I think she's very kind of stylish. She's very. Um, she's armored. I would think of it like armor. In the scenes when she was at home, we found it at the beginning. We were like, "Crikey, what?" I mean. Does she wear jeans? What? And it just seemed so wrong to ever see her unarmed. And she's the sort of person who's always armed. She's always, so even when she's hanging out, she's always really together. She could never be caught short and not rush out the door and be perfectly, um, perfectly ready to face the day. So I think uh, that, was, that was really much uh, part of part of the the clothes that we chose for her. I loved her clothes. So Ozark has done quite well at the Emmys. Uh, one category that it won last year was supporting actress in the drama series. Now, if you were nominated for uh, that category this year, you would have to submit an episode that the Academy could view on the Academy website uh, that would be a showcase of your best work. So do you have an episode in mind that you thought uh, stood out from the third season in terms of your material and your performance? I have absolutely no idea. You better ask someone else. <laughs> uh, well, and what about uh, just an Emmy clip, you know, when they say, you know, Anna McTeer, Ozark, is there some moment from the season where you would want to see on the screen? Oh, I think being waterboarded, that's always fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, the other Emmy that Ozark won last year was uh, directing for Jason Bateman. So, you know, as a viewer, it's, it's very hard to pick out what makes you know, great directing. But can you tell me what makes Jason Bateman stand out as a director? Jason's really, really good. I mean, all of the directors that we have on on uh, Ozark were fantastic, really, really fantastic, all of them. Uh, Jason, so, uh, you know, Jason was very much part of the the original team of, you know, he's one of the, is he a producer or an executive producer or whatever his title is, but, you know, he's very much part of the, the whole team, um, production team, and so he really knows, and he's incredibly well prepared, Jason. He also... He grew up in this business. He knows cameras. He knows the whole business inside out. It's like part of his DNA. And that makes him really good. He is also an actor. So he's also understands from an actor's point of view. He's just, he's, and he's incredibly well prepared. And he has, and he's very um, efficient. He knows exactly what he needs and exactly what he wants. And, um, if you come in with a great idea, he'll go, oh, great, I hadn't thought of that. He's just, he's just really cool. He's a really nice man and really, really good at what he does, both behind and in front of the camera. So the show brought on a second uh, producing director this season in Alex Safrov, who somehow did the last four episodes. Uh, can you tell me what distinguishes his style? Alex, oh, he's such a nice man. He's so great. He's just... He's again along a bit like what I said about Jason. He's incredibly um, specific of, with his camera. He knows what he wants. He knows how to. He's very uh, concentrated. He knows he runs a very tight set, but a very uh, friendly set, um, as does Jason, as you can imagine. It's a lot of fun. Um, and he was, he, uh, Alec is, the, I think they did the four together. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I think they did the four together because it was, 
very much in terms of trying to get it finished in time um, and also it meant that uh, in terms of locations, <clears throat> excuse me, we weren't going, we weren't, you know, normally you shoot two episodes at a time. So you'd go to the birdhouse set, then you'd film for two days there for two episodes, and then you'd go, have to go back there two weeks later. So all of that is a lot of moving around when you're going from set to set to set, because most of it was on location. And so to shoot four together meant we could shoot a lot faster because we could do four episode, you know, uh, scenes at the birdhouse, for example, for five solid days over four episodes. It's harder for the actors in terms of it's easier to imagine the next two weeks, uh, the next two episodes, I'm sorry, uh, than it is to imagine the next four episodes. So in terms of, you know, the scheduling, you have to really, they have to really help you out so that you know what you're learning for next week as opposed to, because you can't necessarily learn all four episodes when you're still filming episode three. So it, it, in, it ha that has its own challenges that you have to be really, really specific about um, knowing all the art. I mean, I would write the storyline out of every single, every single script um, in my, you know, so I could go backwards and forwards going, all right, I know when I shoot this in the last season, in the last episode, I've done this, 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 and this, even though we haven't shot them yet. You just have to be more, uh, you have to be, in a way, more prepared on a different time scale. And uh, what's great about it is, is your, your um, particularly, uh, I mean, Alec is such a, uh, a clever man and such a kind person. And uh, so the, the way that we would do all of that and jump backwards and forwards, he was very... Um, Prepared is something that I use a lot, a word I use a lot, but it actually makes you free. You know, if you know exactly where you are and, and you know, and he's incredibly well prepared and we all, we'd all take the mickey out of his iPad because it all had endless amounts of this is where we are and this is what's happened and this is how I'm going to shoot that. So this is, how, you know, which allows you to really know where you are as an actor going, OK, I know where I am and I know how we're going to shoot that, which means we can shoot this like this. And I think that level of preparedness made him, made us all very uh, relaxed, given that we were trying to shoot four episodes at once. Yeah. Uh, so at Gold Derby, we're an awards-focused website, and you're somebody who is in the conversation, it seems, every single year. Uh, you were in final season of Damages, uh, then you were in The White Queen, and you got a Golden Globe nomination, and the show was nominated for Best Miniseries. The very next year, you were in another Best Miniseries nominee with The Honorable Woman. Now you're in Ozark, which is doing very well. So are you a good luck charm? How are you finding these roles? Um, are they coming to you? Do you just have a knack for them, or what's going on there? I, huh, I would love to think that I'm a good luck charm. <laughs> That's a nice way of looking at it, that I'm a good luck charm. Um, I think I'm incredibly fortunate. I get asked to do a lot of really good, interesting work. And, you know, you can't be nominated for something if the part isn't there. And I'm very, you know, you can be incredibly talented. Many people are ridiculously talented, but they haven't, if they have not got the part that, you know, is that kind of a role, then you know, it doesn't matter how good you are. And I'm very fortunate. I've done a lot of great roles. So um, I guess I'm a good picker. <laughs> and what are people recognizing you for? Like what role? It depends. Um, if, I'm in, if I'm in Manhattan, they, um, they recognize me from the stage usually. Um, if I'm in and or Ozark currently, um, yeah, I think that really, probably. And I suppose in Ozark, it's the nearest I've looked to myself, because often in other things, I've, I've looked very different from how I normally look. So people don't recognize me so much. Whereas in Ozark, it's, I look mostly like myself. So I'm more recognizable, I guess. So this uh, TV season, you were also in the second season of Story for Your Loss on Facebook. <laughs> Uh, which has unfortunately been cancelled. So I wanted to ask you what you think happens to your character, Amy Shaw, in you know the future seasons uh, that we will not see now. Well, I mean, you know, um, I love doing that. It, uh, we had such a great time doing that. It was these incredible 
people and there were a lot of women on board and the men who were on board were also fantastic and you know it was just it was a joyful experience um and uh i'm not sure what will or would or might happen you never know Okay, so you've been cast in a pilot called The President is Missing. Uh, is, is that something that has shot or is that something uh, that's going to be shooting? And uh, what else can you tell us about that one? Um, yes, I, I was filming. Uh, we were prepping in uh, Baltimore for a couple of weeks and then we shot for a week and then they were supposed to continue uh, shooting, but unfortunately, with everything that's going on in the world, we had to uh, stop filming. So um, hopefully that will get going again when when the world is better. That was great fun. I had an amazing time doing that. Um, the the I mean, it was we'd only just started, so it was relatively short and intense. Uh, we rehearsed a lot. We spent a lot of time. We went around. Uh, the Senate. Um, we did a lot of political readings and political understandings of trying to get to grips with I was playing the White House Chief of Staff, so trying to understand that. Uh, I met some extraordinary people, um, watched a lot of extraordinary documentaries, and I'm still reading a lot of books in my in my time off, hoping that that's, uh, well, I mean, it will. It will pick up. It's just a, a question of when. Um, yeah along with the rest of the world. Okay, and finally, I will be interviewing uh, your co-star, Tom Pelfrey, soon. Uh, he came aboard Ozark this season. What should I ask him? You can ask him from me if he's cleaned his kitchen yet. Okay, I will do that. Uh, laugh. Janet, Make him laugh. <laughs> Janet, thanks so much for taking the time to talk. Um, we encourage our viewers to check out Ozark Season 3 and also our YouTube channel for more interviews like this one.